This is going to be an overview of the epistle of Philemon. Philemon means loving or affectionate. It's got one chapter, 25 verses, and around 430 words. This is something you could memorize in a day. It's very short. The author is Paul. The theme is the reconciling power of the grace of God. The historical application is that Philemon is a letter from the Apostle Paul to Philemon telling him to receive Onesimus, his runaway slave. Doctrinally, this story pictures how our sins are put on Jesus Christ's account. And I'll explain that further later. But you see, Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. And Paul pictures Christ. Philemon in the story will picture the Father. Onesimus will picture me and you, the sinner. Uh, Paul is trying to reconcile Onesimus back to Philemon. You see, Onesimus is Philemon's runaway slave. Paul is trying to reconcile them just as Christ does for us with the Father. Inspirationally, you should get involved in recon reconciling people to the Lord, get involved in reconciling brothers who are at odds. The breakdown for this one chapter epistle is verse 1 through 10, you see Paul as the mediator. Like I said, he pictures the Lord Jesus. And what does 1 Timothy 2, 5 say about the Lord Jesus. It says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is our go-between. He's our mediator. Just as Paul is acting as the go-between for Onesimus and Philemon in this story. In verses 11 through 16, Paul is the advocate. In 1 John 2, 1, it says, My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You see, an advocate is someone who pleads your cause. And Paul will come through this epistle and explain why Philemon should accept Onesimus back. He pleads his cause. And then in verses 17 through 25, you got Paul as the substitute. And Jesus Christ became sin and took my place on the cross and my sins were placed on his account. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Paul tells Philemon that if Onesimus has wronged him or owes him anything, to just put it on Paul's account and he'll repay it. Our sins were paid in full on the cross. The wages of sin is death, and the Lord tasted death for every man. So just as Paul tells Philemon that if Onesimus has wronged him or owes him, owes him anything to just put it on Paul's account, he's going to repay it. That's what the Lord did for us. He paid it in full on the cross. Now let's take a look at this small epistle. Verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, and to Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer. Paul is a prisoner for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus and he's sending this epistle to his laborer in the faith, Philemon. And you'll notice in this little small epistle that he says a lot of people's names. And he's showing that he has something to do with other Christians. And he's not one of these people that is just, all you see them do is go around and talk bad about other Christians. And it's like they think that they're the only person that's right with God. And they're the only person that's right. And they don't recommend anybody but themselves. That's not the way Paul was. You see, all through this small epistle, especially at the end there, he is giving shout-outs to people that he recommends. But Philemon is a pastor of the church in his house. And it says in verse 2, And to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. Every saint needs a daily growth of grace and a daily dose of peace with of God. You see, when you got saved, you got the peace with God. Now that you're saved, you need the peace of God. Verse 10. Skipping down to verse 10. 
It says, I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. Onesimus got saved under the preaching of Paul, and Paul has begotten him through the gospel. Just like it says in 1 Corinthians 4.15, what he said to the Corinthians, Paul says, For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. And he had begotten Onesimus in his bonds. While he was a prisoner, he had won Onesimus to the Lord. And when you lead someone to the Lord, you become their spiritual father. And even though they shouldn't call you father... Because, you know, Jesus said, call no man on earth your father, referring to it like in a spiritual sense. Uh, you've begotten someone through the gospel when you lead them to the Lord. It says in verse 11, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. You see, at one time, Onesimus was unprofitable, you see, before his conversion. But now, he isn't like he used to be. He got saved. He's been learning under Paul. And no doubt about it, he's going to come back to Philemon, a better servant, if he comes back. Paul says, Whom I have sinned again, though thou therefore receive him, that is, mine own bowels. In this tiny epistle, the Apostle Paul is going to be a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Philemon will be a picture of God the Father. And Onesimus will picture someone who just got saved. And Paul wants Philemon to receive Onesimus. Paul is writing this epistle so that he can reconcile Philemon and Onesimus. And that's exactly what happened when me and you got saved. Jesus Christ caused the Father to receive us. And we are now of, of his, the same body. We're all of the same body. We, are, we make up the body of Christ. And like where Paul says, receive, referring, to, uh, referring to Onesimus, he says, receive him, that is, mine own bowels. We are the Lord Jesus Christ's own bowels now. We are inside him. He's inside of us. It says in verse 15, For perhaps he therefore departed for a season, that thou shouldest receive him forever. That thou shouldest receive him forever. You see, at one time, as a little child, you had reached the age of accountability. You hadn't reached the age of accountability. You hadn't reached the point where you knew you were a sinner against God. And at that time, you were right with God in his eyes even though you hadn't believed yet you didn't understand yet but then you realized your guilt of sin one day and you departed for a season just as Onesimus had departed but then you got saved and now the Lord will receive you forever you see Philemon he was a runaway slave he departed for a season and now Paul is getting a hold of Philemon here and he's like you know I, he's, he departed for a season but now he's right and you should receive him forever you see the picture there you see there was a time in your life as a little child or you know it differs with certain people about when they reach this certain age where they realize they're a guilty sinner but there was a time when you were like a little child and you were right with the Lord in his eyes and then something happened you realized your guilt of sin you realized you'd sinned against God and you were on your way to hell at that point but then you got saved and now the Lord received you forever so verse 15 for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever not now as a servant but above a servant a brother beloved especially to me, but how much more unto thee, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So above a servant. Paul wants Philemon to receive Onesimus as a brother in the Lord. You see, when you get saved, you become a part of the family of God. You're more than a servant. You see, Onesimus is still going to be a servant, but he's also going to be a brother in the Lord. When you get saved, you're still a servant of Jesus Christ, but you're part of the family. And he says in verse 18, Paul says, if he hath wronged thee, or oweth thee aught, put that on mine account. So you see the picture? Not only did God receive you just as easily as he would Jesus Christ because of the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ that was put on you, at the same time, he doesn't impute any of your unrighteousness to you. He puts it on Jesus Christ's account for it to be nailed to the cross and under the blood. 
So, when you get saved, God puts Jesus Christ's righteousness on your account, and he doesn't impute your unrighteousness to you anymore. And Paul says in verse 19, I, Paul, have written it with mine own hand. I will repay it. Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. So Paul says, I will repay it. Just as the Lord Jesus Christ paid our sin debt. You know, the wages of sin is death. Jesus Christ took your death. He tasted death for every man. And then Paul says, uh, uh, Albeit I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. So Paul is giving Philemon the option, but he still throws in, he still throws in there, you know, you, know, you owe me. So he's, he's trying to reconcile Philemon and Onesimus. But this has been a quick overview of Philemon.